Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, you know better than me the anatomy of the aortic heart and the aortic arch because I'm just a cardiologist doing echocardiography. But I would like to remind you that I will focus this presentation on this part I will, that we say on the anonymous of the sinus of Valsalva with the seminal attachment of the valve sinotubular junction. So what want the surgeon? The surgeon have to know the mechanism of valve dysfunction and old lesion to be able to repair the aortic root. So the question are, what is the anatomy of the aortic valve? What about the aortic root, the mechanism for aortic regurgitation? Could I repair? And finally, after the repair, is that a good repair with durability? The tools that we have is mainly echocardiography with transthoracic, transesophageal, and no 3D real-time echocardiography. But more recently, we have MDCT and MRI to assess the aortic road. In the sake of time, and because this is the only tools that we can't have in the operating theater, I will focus my talk on the use of transesophageal echocardiography. So the first question is, what's the anatomy of the aortic valve? Mm -hmm. As you know, normally aortic valve is tricuspid, but you can also have unicuspid, bicuspid, or quadricuspid valve. The question is not only the number of the leaflet, but also the quality of the tissue of the leaflet. Are they thin or thick? Is it some calcification, moderated, or severely calcified aortic valve? The second question is what about the aortic root and what's the mechanism of aortic regurgitation? And then we suggest that you use for that the long axis view with the transesophageal uh, echocardiography showing you the uh, left ventricular outflow tract and the aortic root. And we will specially take this measurement, the anulus, sinuses, sinotubular junction, and tubular aorta. Of course, normal values were published, and you will see here for male and for female according to transthoracic echo or transesophageal echocardiography. You have to adjust according to the body surface area this measurement. I will present you a classification of aortic root dysfunction. Like you have the Carpentier classification for mitral valve dysfunction, we can distinguish three forms. One, you have the normal cus motion of the aortic valve. One A, sinotubular junction dilatation. B, sinotubular junction plus sinuses dilatation. One C, annular dilatation. And one D, leaflet perforation. In the second group, we have an excess cups motion due to leaflet prolapse or commissural dysfunction. And the third group is the restricted cups motion due to commissural fusion, calcification, or fibrous thickening. Let's show some examples. So, this is one example of transesophageal echocardiography of aortic road uh, aneurysm. You see that there is a dilatation at this level and at the ascending aorta. And if we put the top of the color on, you will see that we have a central jet for aortic regurgitation. This is an example of sinotubular junction dilatation, and you cannot recognize any more sinotubular junction here. If turning the color on, you see that there is a central jet. This is an example of sinus of Valsalva anuris, and you see this huge enlargement of the sinus here. And I will show you the short axis view. So this is the 90 degree oriented view compared to the long axis view. More frequent dilatation is at the level of the right coronary sinus, 69%. This is an example of annular dilatation and you see that there is a loss of central coaptation with the regurgitation jet at this level. This is a leaflet perforation example, like after antocarditis, and you see that you have a huge jet at the level of the perforation. Type 2 is the prolapses. A prolapse of aortic leaflet is a displacement of an aortic leaflet of part of the dwarf toward the left ventricle beyond the plane of the aortic annulus in diastole. 
Several kinds of products exist. You may have the leaflet. There is no more leaflet co-optation. The leaflet is floating in the old float work. You can have a prolapse. The leaflet body is deposited below the level of the annulus plane. A partial leaflet prolapse only part of the leaflet is prolapsing. The leaflet is divided in two parts by a fibrous band. So I show you some examples. This is a flail leaflet. You see that there is very restricted cooptation. This is a partial leaflet prolapse, and you see very well that it's labeled the fibrous band. Total leaflet prolapse here, and in short axis, and you see this spoon aspect. What is frequent with prolapse is the presence of a fenestration that you can see here, and with the recurgitant jet at this level. This is the class three leaflet restriction, and you see this heavily calcified aortic valve. The third question is could I repair? So if we classify it in three group, aortic root dilatation, cusp prolapse, or poor cusp quality tissue, and we consider that you can repair just if you have small, thin, large leaflet with retentant tissue were considered as repairable, small, restricted fibers of taconate leaflet were to, to preclude surgical repair. Heavily calcified valves were usually considered as non-repairable. So, first, can transesophageal echocardiography correctly identify this different lesion compared to the surgical inspection? And you will see that we can already, with a very nice uh, accuracy, predict what the surgeon will find. If we look more closely at the level of the prolapse, and you see here just a reminder of the different kind of prolapse that you may have, you will see that transophagal echocardiography can also very well identify flail uh, prolapse, flail, sorry, flail leaflet, wall cause prolapse, or partial cause prolapse of fenestration compared to the surgical fainting. And finally, if we say with transesophageal echocardiography that it's a good quality tissue, we can predict replacement if it's poor quality tissue of repair. It's a very good quality tissue, and it's really what the surgeon will do thereafter. And looking at the repairability, type 1 and type 2, what is say, uh, dilatation of the aortic road and prolapse are very suitable for repair. In comparison, if we look at COOP3, it's not very suitable for repair. In fact, we have more even weight and more recurrence in patients with type 3, what is restrictive aortic valve. And the final question is what is a good repair? What can we accept after the surgery? So we made a comparison of a group of patients where we have echo data just preoperative immediately after the surgery in the operating theater and long-term follow-up. And if we compare the patient with no recurrence of aortic regurgitation, of recurrence of aortic regurgitation in the long-term follow-up, and then we look at the preoperative data, you will see that we have more recurrence in Marfan patient also, more recurrence in type 3 aortic regurgitation, what we say when you have a restriction. And if we have a look now on the image at post operative data, you will look that patients with recurrent aortic regurgitation in the follow up have a a smaller coaptation length, a smaller tips to annulus length, a smaller cusp to annulus length, and a more eccentric, more frequently eccentric jet for aortic regurgitation than patients without any aortic regurgitation. And if we go to a multivariate analysis, you will see that the coaptation length, the distance tips to annulus, and the presence of an eccentric jet are very important to know the long term success and the absence of aortic regurgitation in the follow-up of the patient. So I just show you one example. This is what you cannot accept after a surgery of repair. You have a coaptation length less than 5 mm, an eccentric jet, and a coaptation level below the annulus. 
In comparison, here you have a cohabitation length more than 5 mm, no a small central jet, 8 cohabitation level compared to the level of the annulus. And I will propose the following anchoring to predict a successful repair. When you look at first at the cohabitation tip, is it below the annulus? Yes, you have a eight recurrence rate of aortic regurgitation and an eight retro rate. If it's no, look if there is some residual aortic regurgitation. No aortic regurgitation, perfect. You have an aortic regurgitation, look at the coaptation length. If it's less than four millimeter, you will have a eight rate of recurrence rate of aortic regurgitation in the follow-up. If you have more than four millimeter, it's okay, very few. Um, aortic regurgitation in the follow-up. So I will say in conclusion, I imagine if the aortic road plays an important role in the compression of mechanism underlying aortic road dysfunction, in the assessment of lesion and prediction of reparability, in the post-surgical evaluation and prediction of long-term reason. Finally, this is need a team approach between the cardiologist, the anesthesiologist, and the surgeon. I thank you for your attention.